We're restaurant hopping on a mouthful. Stay tuned. Brought to you by Bristol's Wines and Spirits and Premier Crew. BTC every day. Welcome back, foodies. You're watching A Mouthful with Trey. And you heard me right. We're going restaurant hopping today. Not just one restaurant, but six whole restaurants with true Bahamian food tours. This cool food tour is taking you down downtown Nassau and telling you all the great places that you could stop for a great bite. We're gonna start with Bahamian cooking, walk on over to Grey Cliff, pop into Van Bruegel's, and end our travels at Athena's Cafe. So let's see, that's Bahamian, Brazilian, French, and Greek. We're truly going on an adventure and taste this episode. So let's go find our tour guide and see what they have for us. So Dre, uh, my name's Alana. Mm -hmm. I want to welcome you to our True Bahamian Bites of Nassau Food Tasting Cultural Walking Tour. Okay. Very much looking forward to spending the next three hours in your company and hopefully you brought your appetite because we have a lot of eating to do in the next three hours. We're going to work very hard to get some solid tastings into your belly very early <laughs> on, but okay. it is a progressive dining tour. So as we walk together, uh, the tastings become a bit lighter in nature and then mm -hmm. towards the end of the tour are actually quite educational. Those are okay. more about improving your food IQ, which I know is already very high, <laughs> as opposed to filling your belly per se. Just to let you guys know, rain or shine, we're on this food tour. This is our first tasting stop of today's tour. We're here at Bahamian Cooking, mm -hmm. and uh, we're gonna go ahead and get seated at the back table, which is reserved for us. Okay. Hi, Penny. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Dre, right, we're here at our first tasting stop of today's tour called Bahamian Cooking. Uh, this is our most down-home traditional stop on today's tour. It's actually been here for almost 30 years. And it was first established by a traditional Bahamian cook named Miss Maina Wallace, who's actually celebrating her 71st birthday this year. And she really saw an opportunity in downtown Nassau because unlike many downtowns around the world, which are both residential and commercial, our downtown Nassau is only commercial. There are no longer people living in this neighborhood. And as a result, the people you see walking around and patronizing restaurants, apart from visitors, are locals that are working professionally. We have, of course, our central bank across the road here, Ministry of Tourism offices, banks, law firms, accounting firms. And these are the people that are walking around and patronizing restaurants. And as we both know, in the Bahamas, our breakfast and lunch meals tend to be the heaviest of the day. And for most of us, if they don't have both rice and meat included, they are not considered proper meal. Ties are of conkfurters, which you have in front of you. And then we move on to a full representative meal, which is a, a dish that centers around steamed chicken, as well as a number of sides, which you know is customary in Bahamian culture. So we have peas and rice coming up, baked macaroni and cheese, coleslaw, and fried plantains. And we're gonna wash all this down with a glass of switch-up. Conky conkfurters, like you said, um, the pillowy, I love how you described it, that like crispy crust. It's really good. How many times have you walked downtown and like just walked past this jewel? It's a gem. The macaroni is awesome. Macaroni connoisseur right here. And this is one of the top macaronis that I've had. Very creamy and cheesy. It's flavorful. It stays together. It's pretty awesome. Um, and let's talk about that chicken, the fall off the bone, the succulent and tender and juicy. The rice, perfect pairing, and the coleslaw, it's not sweet, so don't expect sugar, it's very good. Sweet and savory bites at Bahamian Cooking. Cliff. Guess what guys, we finally have an amazing website for you where we'll be posting more food adventures, behind the scenes photos and blogs, and this time even our own ratings. Go on, check us out at adventureandtaste.com.
we just got done with Bahamian cooking, and now we're at Grey Cliff to get some chocolate and beer. Can't wait. with our guests is the fact that Nassau was the hotbed of piracy for about 40 years in the late 1600s and early 1700s. We had the highest concentration of pirates anywhere in the world. And one of the things we talked about on the tour is the fact that for being such a small country in terms of the population, we're quite prolific when it comes to beer production. Uh, we have three breweries in the country, as you know. Um, of course, the Commonwealth Brewery, which makes the very famous Click beer mm -hmm. on this island, as well as uh, the Bahamian Brewery Beverage Company, which makes this beer you're having Sand, which is based in Freeport, mm -hmm. sort of known as the second city in the Bahamas. And then a local brewery, the Pirate Republic, that just opened up downtown, which launched a series of IPAs. most popular uh, tasting sauce on the tour because after all we're having chocolate just a couple of moments and uh, what we like to say initially is that for a lot of people joining us on the tour uh, they tend to not think of the Bahamas as a country associated with chocolate which makes a ton of sense we do not have a history of growing cacao beans in the Bahamas primarily because of our soil but Great Cliff actually made history when they were the first uh, company to actually plant our first batch of cacao beans here on this island and also in Andros when they first opened in 2012. Uh, now, Cacao beans typically take three to five years to come to harvest. We don't actually know if they're gonna be successful at this or not for a few more months at the minimum. But if they are, uh, that's going to be a huge step forward in terms of our food security in the Bahamas because as you know, we currently import over 70% of our food. And we're gonna showcase two different bonbons today. The first one we're gonna start with is a white chocolate key lime pie. So I'll let you help yourself to that to start. It is very amazing, Alana. You you didn't lie. Um, I can. It's the citrus, that little pow of citrus, the creamy, the sweetness of the chocolate, and that little crust inside there. It's a little nugget for you. <laughs> because I'm such a foodie, I'm always eating great food, and I want to share them with you. So follow me on Instagram and Facebook for all the dishes that don't make it on the show. Follow me. I follow back. stop on the tour, Van Bruegel's, where we're going to get a creamy kung chowder. Today's tour, uh, Van Bruegel's, and we're going to be having coconut curry kung chowder for another savory tasting. This, this is served with a baguette and a house-made garlic parsley butter. So let's begin before we even taste it. Look at all of this conch and all of the herbs, the carrots. It's huge. So that should that should set us up for a good bite. I want to taste the broth first. Alana said it was going to be something spicy and coconut Thai flavors infused in our traditional conch chowder. Maybe I'm used to the, the spices because there's no, <coughs> like Alana said, it's really good. <laughs> oh, it's melt in your mouth. It's so good. I know why it's sold out at the end of the day because I can eat this all day. It's comfort food. It makes you warm inside. It's so good um, with all the flavors, the spices of Thai, the nice sweetness of the, of the coconut. It's a very good bite. Our uh, fourth tasting stop of today's tour. We're at the Jelling Bahamian Boutique. So this guava jam is like an apple butter consistency. Okay. Um, with the real richness of guava fruit. I have never tasted a better guava jam in my life. As you know, we use guava jam as we would use uh, on toast, on Johnny cake. We also pair this often with cheddar cheese. Yes. Um, and this is excellent when paired with a wheel of brie. Yes. that you bake in the oven, just like you'd use a raspberry coulis or something similar. Mm -hmm. It also goes really well with barbecue sauces. You see a lot of tamarind glazed or guava glazed ribs or wings, these kind of things. And as you know, it's essential ingredient in lots of our baking. So we make guava tarts and of course our world famous guava duff. And now it's time for the Bristol Wine and Spirits and Premier Crew Wine of the Week. So Rusty, today we're diving for kunk and all of the Bahamian treats. Can you give me a wine that I can pair with the traditional Bahamian dishes? Well, the magic word you just mentioned was kunk. Now I have a special wine that, for kunk dishes. And 
which also goes with lobster, also goes with crab, crab back, boiled crab, but, but, but specifically conch. And the wine is a Sauvignon Blanc, and the one that I have in mind is a mature Sauvignon Blanc, conch Sauvignon Blanc, made a match made in heaven. So I think we should try it and see what you think. It's wonderful. It's on the palate, grassy, a bit, bit of minerality there. But try this experiment. Get a piece of dried um, cracked conch, okay. pop it in your mouth and take a Sauvignon Blanc in and you will find an explosion of flavors. I don't know what it is, but it seems to be the wine reacts with the conch and you get the best of both in your mouth. So try it. Nice. And where can we find this wine? Bristol Wines and Spirits, of course, in all of our branches. So stop in and, and, and pick up a bottle and try the experiment. <laughs> Thank you, Esty. Okay. guests are oftentimes a bit confused as to what we're doing at a Greek restaurant on a Bahamian food tour. And as you and I were discussing earlier, because the Bahamas has no indigenous population since 25 years or so after Christopher Columbus came upon these islands, the Lucanians were basically obliterated. Everybody who's come to the Bahamas after that point has in essence been an immigrant. And the Greeks have played a very important role uh, in Bahamian society since they first began arriving here around the 1860s. As I was saying to you before, this is the number one selling item on Athena Cafe's menu. Um, and it's a very refreshing tasting as well. And one of the things that really distinguishes a Greek salad from others is the freshness of the ingredients. So in this case, we have a freshly tossed bed of romaine lettuce, to which we add Roma tomatoes and green bell peppers, both of which come from the Musa's family garden. They've got a big farm in Long Island. Um, they also have a farm on their own property out west. And a lot of the fruits and vegetables are sourced locally seasonally throughout the year and incorporated into their menu. So Dre, we're at the end of our tour. I want to thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy schedule to join us and hopefully you've enjoyed eating and walking your way through downtown Nassau with us. Thank you so much. I had such a great day. Awesome. Hugs! <laughs> <laughs> we started in the rain and we're ending in the rain. We tour rain or shine. Again, great food, great culture. Try true Bahamian food tours. It's for tourists and Bahamians. You just had a mouthful with Dre. See you next time. Promotional consideration brought to you by the BahamasWeekly.com, BahamasLocal.com, BahamianOrNutton.com.